Good afternoon. I'm Paula Tutman, live in Ann Arbor at Mott Children's Hospital, where life support has just been discontinued for 14-year-old Bobby Reyes. We'll have a live report on the last few moments of the battle to keep him connected. Karen? Also breaking this afternoon, new questions about the future of Michigan's vape ban after a judge hands down a new decision. I'll tell you what just happened. Ben. Karen, we just got into the 60s, but the showers are on their way, and we've got more not-so-nice stuff behind that. It's all right now, first at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. I'm Karen Drew. We start with some very sad news for the family of teenager Bobby Reyes. He has been taken off life support weeks after a severe asthma attack put him in the hospital. His mother had been fighting a legal battle, hoping he would recover against all odds. Our Paula Tutman is at the hospital this afternoon, and this has been a very emotional day, Paula. Absolutely, and I've been talking to really many parties involved, family members, supporters, as well as the hospital. And this is a sad day for everyone. This family fought for time, hoping for a miracle. Today, that time just simply ran out. Late this afternoon, Sarah Jones spoke to the few supporters who gathered outside Mott Children's Hospital to say that Bobby had been declared dead for a second time at 1137 this morning. When they issued the death certificate, when they did the second test at 1136, well, we told them not to do that test. We didn't give our permission for them to do that test. They did it anyways. This after a roller coaster court battle in which the family was fighting to keep a restraining order in place that would keep Bobby on life support for a 29th day. He was originally declared brain dead September 25th after being admitted to the pediatric ICU after suffering a severe asthma attack and cardiac arrest. Today, a Washtenaw County Circuit judge dismissed the case because the original restraining order was filed in the wrong jurisdiction. Because University of Michigan Hospital System is considered a government agency, the proper court would have been the Court of Claims. It is certainly very sympathetic to the, all of the concerns and the heartbreak of the, of the, uh, of the petitioner. Uh, but if the court doesn't have jurisdiction, the Supreme Court has made it clear that I have no authority to do anything. This is life or death right now, so we are going to file something. I have something prepared already, and we're going to file it. I don't know if it's going to be successful or not. This could be the end. I hope and pray not. When Sarah returned to the hospital after court, she says the second brain death test was already being performed, even though the family has been fighting to keep that test from being performed. U of M is performing the second test on Bobby right now against our wishes. We beg them not to. That's this where they, they try to call his time of death, and I don't, we're not agreeing to it because we know he is not brain dead. A written statement from the hospital reads in part, our health care team at Michigan Medicine extends our deepest condolences to the family of Bobby Reyes in this heartbreaking situation. A second brain death examination was conducted late this morning, and Bobby was pronounced dead. Mechanical ventilation was discontinued after the family gathered in the patient's room. You know, this family fought so valiantly. I mean, really fighting up, uh, fighting against the hospital, going to court. Um, you can certainly understand them not wanting to let go. Uh, Bobby has four siblings, including a twin brother. And you can imagine that this is the single, single worst day of their lives, Karen. Of course, we are keeping the Reyes family in our thoughts this afternoon. Thank you, Paula. We do have some breaking news on Michigan's new vape ban. A judge has just blocked Governor Whitmer's ban on flavored e-cigarettes. The ruling found the administration's delay in implementing the ban weakened its position that emergency rules were needed. The judge also said that if flavored vaping products are prohibited, then adults will move to using more harmful tobacco products like cigarettes. Vape store owners filed the challenge. We are gathering reaction. We'll have more for you tonight at 5. It is the number one question affecting thousands of families in Metro Detroit. Are General Motors and the UAW closer to a deal? For the second time, General Motors CEO Mary Barra has stopped to check in on talks. GM President Mark Royce was also there, both trying to push the talks along, but not taking part in negotiations. Also, the UAW has invited local presidents to Detroit for a meeting that's going on on Thursday. So what does this all mean? New at 5, we are going to take a look at why some think we could be close to a deal. And then at 6, we'll review the reasons why the strike might keep going. 
New updates each hour here on Local 4. We're told a faulty furnace is to blame for three children and three adults being sickened by carbon monoxide poisoning in Detroit overnight. That leak happened at a home on West Grand Boulevard near I-96 early this morning. All six people were taken to the hospital and we are told they should be okay. The fire marshal says there was no carbon monoxide detector inside the home. Right now, there is a boil water advisory down in Monroe. The city's water system lost pressure causing the advisory. The affected area is north of the River Raisin in Maybe, Village, Rains, Raisinville, Exeter, and London Townships. Now, affected residents should boil their water for at least a minute before drinking, cooking, or brushing your teeth. City is currently testing the water, and it hopes to have that order lifted by Thursday. We'll be following it and keep you posted. And we are in a bit of a fall weather roller coaster. A little chilly yesterday, but today, Ben, it is gorgeous, but it's not going to last that long, is it? No, in fact, Karen, that temperature that we've got out there right now may be the warmest that we see for the rest of the work week because we're going to take a step backwards uh, after we get into tonight. Four Live Radar's got a couple sprinkles that have generally fallen apart, but we're going to see a lot more of these as the night goes on. It's 61 out there right now. Do have a lot of clouds and a little bit of a southeast wind, but that is going to go up and that number is going to go down. As we get through the rest of tonight, chances of seeing some sprinkles will last through about 10 o'clock. Once we get to the midnight hour, that's when the rain becomes more likely. The good news is it's going to be out of here by daybreak tomorrow. The bad news is the cold air and the wind just getting started. So we'll take a look at the timing on that and a pretty nice weekend after coming up in just a few minutes, Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. We are learning more about what happened in the moments before a Texas woman was shot to death in her own home. Plus, the officer who shot has now been arrested for murder. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with the latest on the investigation, and people are talking about this all around the country, Kim. Good afternoon, Karen. You're right. The eyes of the nation are on Fort Worth, Texas, and the case is moving quickly here. Atiana Jefferson was killed Saturday night by a police officer who fired a shot through the window of her home. Officer Aaron Dean resigned just hours before he was arrested. Court documents show Jefferson was at home with her nephew when police were called to make a welfare check. Officer Dean's body camera showed him approaching a window, calling out, show me your hands, and then firing inside that house. He did not announce that he was a police officer. The arrest warrant for Dean quoted Jefferson's nephew saying his aunt heard noises, took a gun from her purse, pointed it toward the window, and then was shot. The Fort Worth police chief says that was not an excuse for Officer Dean to open fire. I cannot tell you what, uh, what he felt. He did not give a statement to our investigators. Um, I, the, the, the gun was found just inside the room, but it makes sense that she would have a gun if she felt that she was being threatened or there was someone in the backyard. Well, now former officer Aaron Dean was uh, freed on $200,000 bond after his arrest. Uh, Dean has not spoken with the media yet. His attorney said he will provide a statement at a later date. So, Karen, uh, we'll keep you posted as we learn more and we'll bring it to you when we have it. Until then, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. A new witness has gone before Congress in the impeachment investigation swirling around President Trump. Deputy Assistant Secretary of State George Kent is on Capitol Hill. He is expected to testify about a campaign by Rudy Giuliani to pressure Ukraine into investigating former Vice President Joe Biden. Giuliani is the president's personal attorney. Kent reportedly also tried to shield the former ambassador to Ukraine who was fired by the Trump administration. Still ahead, first of four, you've heard the saying, happy wife, happy life. Maybe it should be changed to happy spouse, better health. We'll tell you what new research says this afternoon. And ahead, what are you willing to give up to fight climate change? One expert has an idea that would affect those frequent flyer accounts many of us use. And the story of a 12-year-old girl who saved her mother's life in a moving car. You'll hear from them about that terrifying moment. We are back in less than three minutes. What do doctors do when we get sick? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., I'll share my personal recipe for feeling better fast and what 